If you're looking for the answers, I still don't have them. But what I do have is a particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people who mislead, misinform, or misrepresent the sports card industry. So if you don't do that, I'll let it go. But if you do, I'm gonna talk about you. Welcome back to another entertaining and enlightening episode of the Sports Card Investigator Show. Let's start off with a question. Just because someone is positive, does that make them right? I hate to break it to these guys, but being positive or optimistic about something doesn't necessarily make you right at all. Being positive is a subjective emotional state that can be influenced by various factors such as personal beliefs, preferences, and my favorite, biases. And that's the key, right? Is it in these guys, your hobby heroes, is it in their best interest to be positive about something? Now, that question is rhetorical because you guys know the answer. Now, while not every leader or hobby influencer in the sports card hobby has bad intentions, we should be cautious of those who use the guise of positivity to conceal ulterior motives. It's like selling a trimmed card with a wink and a smile. Hey, it may look great, but it's deceptive. It is ultimately deceptive and it undermines the trust in our great hobby. The cardtastic positive prognosticators often overlook or downplay the potential risks, flaws, and negative consequences of certain aspects of the sports car hobby. And this can lead to their flock, I mean followers, to make poor judgments, hold unrealistic expectations, and ultimately fail. And unfortunately, we are witnessing that now. And it's the tip of the iceberg. Brace yourself for impact. And I love how when things go sideways in the hobby, they just ignore it. Turn a blind eye and move on to the next best thing. Nothing to see here, just the collapse of a company that we told you was going to be the next best thing. It's going to change everything. Revolutionize the sports card investing. Is there such a thing? It's the ultimate combination of everything that is great with NBA Top Shot, but is backed by real physical cards that you're familiar with and want to collect. I find it amusing that some people in our hobby always caution us, right? Caution us. They instruct us. Don't speculate or prospect on rookies. Oh, those rookie QBs. That's a sure way to lose money. Fair enough. But when it comes to unproven companies, it's throw caution to the wind. Trust us and full speed ahead. Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. So the moral of this story is, is there a moral to this? I guess there's a moral to every story. Be aware of your emotional state. Don't be afraid to question someone's positivity. If it seems too good to be true, probably is. And always remember, just because you're positive, you're not always right. So speaking of trading cards, see what I did there? Let's take a minute and discuss trades at trading card shows. What? Specifically, though, not trades at trade nights, but trades with dealers. As you guys who watch the channel, we know that Ty and I attended the Philly show. We have some great content coming your way. Stay tuned. But I thought this topic was good enough for a little standalone worth discussing. You know, it's funny. We walk in there and dealers have the signs up almost at every booth or table. Trade! Yet It seems few dealers really want to do that. Why is that? Why is that? I don't know, Andy. Tell us. Well, maybe the signs are only to attract people to their table because, I don't know. I can tell you most dealers did not want to even consider trades. But before we continue down this path of fun and excitement, consider the term itself, trading cards. It's not a misnomer. The origin of collecting cards can be traced back to the late 19th century, when tobacco companies put cards in their products to boost sales. People began to collect and trade these cards as a form of entertainment and what? Socialization. What has changed since then? Nothing. A lot. 
The concept of trading reflects the idea of a mutual benefit or value exchange. When you trade cards with someone, you both agree that the cards you receive are worth more, worth as much or more than the cards you're going to give away. Trading also implies at some level of trust and communication between parties. More on that in a minute. Therefore, trading is not just a casual act, but a fundamental aspect of the credit credit of the as a Freudian slip a fundamental aspect of the card collecting hobby culture. Just another example, the sports card investigators show education and entertainment. So Ty and I got to the show. It was a pretty big show. It was packed and we're walking around and we came across a Joel Embiid patch auto. It wasn't anything crazy. It was from a discontinued set as a matter of fact, but it was cool. And we PC the future MVP, Joel Embiid. So we're targeting his cards. Now I want to make this clear. The table clearly said on a large sign, trade, buy, sell, trade. So we thought, great, we want that card. Let's get down to business. I mean, why would you have a humongous sign if you were not interested in trading? So we asked the guy to see the card, and the price was $270. There was no comps available. It was limited. But it seemed fair. It seemed fair. So we then asked, would you be interested in a trade? And then he said, it depends. When Ty and I go to card shows, we have a very specific system in place. Ty leads the negotiating process. I chime in. Chime in. Uh, when the opportunity is necessary, opportune times, if it's needed. It seldom is because Tyler's pretty goddamn good. But from the jump, this dealer was giving off a weird vibe. But it is what it is. And Tyler said, what are you interested in far as trade? And he said, anything. Okay. At that point, though, I knew this was not going anywhere. Anything we showed him was going to be like, trading a bag of Skittles for a Ferrari, but what the heck, we're there, so let's play. Well, he said anything and anything we had, so Ty proceeded to show him a <laughs> Joe Burrow base, PSA 10. I know, I know, it's a base card, but it was right at comps. It's about 270 bucks, and we wanted to get the conversation started, and started we did. We also had a Giannis Hoops Rookie PSA 10. Not the greatest card, but indeed it qualified as anything. And the comps for that card were $400. So we had $270 for the Burrow, the Giannis 400. Side note, that Giannis card once sold for $1,700. We were in a crazy time. Anyway, Ty said, so what are you thinking? And he replies, not even close. And then went on to say something like, why would I want those cards? I don't know, Mr. Dealer. You had a big sign above your table that said buy, sell, trade, and you just said you'd be interested in anything. Is that slang for do not waste my time? He did say he would take 250 in cash, and I'm sure he would, and that price wasn't awful, but the experience was, and that was followed up by his attitude, so see you later. But here's the thing. If you're a dealer, shouldn't your goal be to make money? Whether you're trading for a card, selling it for cash, the ultimate goal is to turn a profit, right? That's what a successful business will do. So why would you turn down a card that's comparable in value to the one you're selling? Just because it's not exactly what you're looking for. In fact, we were not against trading the Giannis straight up. We didn't have much into it at all. And we knew it was worth way more than what he was asking for that card. He could have flipped that thing in a New York minute. And he, we, we, even, we would have even sweetened the pot up with some cash if he wanted to burrow. Or we would, have showed him, we would have showed him some other cards which I know he would have been interested in. Or probably not because he just wanted cash. And they really never got to any kind of real negotiation. And that's the other thing, right? You don't got to know when to walk away. He had no intention of trading. And again, we had some great cards that he probably would have been interested in, but so bad, or too bad, so sad, and we walked away. That's fine. 
In the end, we did manage to find some dealers who were willing to trade, and they scored great cards, as did we. And more on that later. And the dealers that we had success with went about it the right way. Would you like to see what we have? As a matter of fact, yes, I would. Then we go and we get our, our Zion case or cases and we show them and they go through them and they pick out the cards they want and we discuss the comps, we discuss the price, we add some cash if necessary and the deal gets done. But that experience with that guy still had us wondering, why bother put up a sign that says trade if you're not really going to trade? Maybe it's just a ploy to attract people to your table like a moth to a flame. Maybe bait and switch no 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 because all dealers are great speaking of great recently i watched a youtube video that said dealers are more professional than flippers and that people associate flippers with lower integrity lower willingness to be fair squeeze every penny out of everything blah 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 dribble 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 well 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 <laughs> blah 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 dribble 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 well 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 it looks like we've stumbled upon some stereotyping here huh it's like saying all dogs are friendly and cats are aloof. Sure, it might be some truth to it, but it's not exactly a fair assessment. I've meant plenty of aloof dogs. Our hobby, our hobby heroes, our hobby heroes are just like careless artists using a broad brush to paint a distorted picture in hopes that what they have created, someone will buy as a truth. In reality, it's just their biased impression of the hobby. Some people might label flippers as lacking in integrity or being unfair, but let's not forget there are plenty of dealers out there and others in our industry that give this hobby a bad name. It's like saying all chefs are good, all politicians are honest. It's just not the case. So the bottom line is this. It's time to put the broad brush away and start seeing people for who they are and what they are and not just a label that some people have given them. Man, I kind of took a turn. Anyway, sermon over. Don't forget, plenty of more great shows coming your way. And again, if you like what you see, hit the like, hit the subscribe. If you don't like what you see, smash it, blam it, knock it off your computer, whatever. Until next time, take care.